Oh yeah. Okay. Can you back up a little bit? Cause they're gonna hit the side of the a bit, a bit more. Okay. Ready? <laughs> you better do it, man. Let's, let's shoot. Dude, let's I can't do. film and do it at the same time. <laughs> oh, here we go again. We are somewhere in the boreal forest and we're going to go find a lake I haven't been to in 20 years. 20 years, almost, to the calendar. I don't remember the last time I went exactly. But yeah, 20 years ago, I visited this lake. It had brook toad in it. And hopefully it still has brook toad in it. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, we're gonna find out. And uh, we've decided to do two nights. I uh, got Jeremy here. We've got the canoe loaded up on a golf cart. It's a pretty neat system. So we're gonna wheel it off. About an hour and a half drive, we gotta go, or an hour walk, drive. We've already been an hour and a half drive. So yeah, we gotta walk this out through uh, untended path. So it should be interesting whether or not we get there. Jared's gonna put on his cheater. We call it cheating. Is it? No. <laughs> it's the poison free method. <laughs> I'm gonna use the poison method. <laughs> I don't have one of those cheaters. That's for cheaters. <laughs> and so is the deet though. We're just off the swamp, so it's probably gonna get a little bit better. It's not going too bad with the golf cart. Uh, making this way, but it's kind of slipping around, which is to be expected. It does that all the time. Can you guys hear the mosquitoes? You see them? Oh, I gotta go. Oh, nice. How's that? All right, that's enough of that. Well, I think I talked about how many mosquitoes there were, but I think this is worse than Mosquito Creek at this point. There's a lot of mosquitoes here. I think there's about a thousand right around here. A couple hundred at least. The trick about mosquitoes is not to panic. As soon as you panic, they're just gonna get worse. Just kind of brush them off. Go to your calm space. Feel the zen and be at one with nature. Or just use DEET. Kill them all. We gotta get this canoe up this hill. We got a long way to go still. But you're glad you're watching this and not out here doing it. So we made it, just when we were about to give up. No, we weren't gonna give up, but we did blow the tire. <laughs> the golf cart is mangled. So uh, yeah, the tire blew out on it. And we were trying to decide if we should just keep going or turn back and maybe go to go up north again. I, I forgot to mention to Jeremy, we should go further north this time, but you know, this lake was an option. It was the one we were planning on going to. So we're here, we're actually here. So we, we're just, uh, the tire blew out and I tried to figure out how to get here so we dragged the canoe for a little bit. We're real careful not to hurt it too much and uh, we're gonna do a double carry but uh, <laughs> down the hill I don't know what happened maybe the trail improved on it or something but we got here sooner than we sooner than we expected so it only took us about maybe 45 minutes an hour to total with lots of stops and, and breaks and all that adjusting getting everything working properly and uh, there's quite a bit of activity on the lake, which is a little bit concerning to me, but I think it's mostly uh, ice fishing, which is obviously not good good pressure, but it's it's what we have. So there's a couple spots. Um, it looks like people have been camping out to make, uh, to ice fish. So we've picked one of the spots here. There's a really old fire pit, um, not well used. And we're gonna make it our home. Not really great tent pads, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work, we'll clear. Nobody's camping here, which is a good thing. Uh, but people are definitely visiting here in the winter, it looks like, from uh, my estimate of things. So we're gonna go up here and uh, check out what we got and make it our home. The well, first thing we got here is some spring water. That's coming up off the hill, which is pretty cool. Nice cold water. We can dig a, a trough there and we can collect some water rather than grabbing stuff from the lake. This will be a little bit cleaner, but not much. Still have to boil it. Although Jeremy will probably drink right out of it, and I am. 
Oh, that's good enough. You never know where that might come from. Up, up above could be a stagnant pond that's flowing out of. You know, it looks nice and cool and filtered. Could still carry pathogens. So I have to clear a little bit of a trail up through here. And this is what we're coming in on. We got a really old fire pit with nothing in it. So it hasn't been burned for a while. People made some nice chairs. I made that one. Oh, you made it. Yeah. You're First one was there. contributing. So we got two chairs, two rock chairs. Throw a life jacket on there, it'll be all set. Yeah. And then down over this way, we have uh, one spot to put a tent. Just have to clear these rocks out here. I already started to do a little bit. These are fairly easy to move. They don't need a big space. I'll probably just throw the tent here. Not the best spot because it's on the lake, but that breeze is going to get rid of a lot of the mosquitoes that we have. The best part about this site right now is that there, if I go in the sun and the uh, in the breeze here, there are no mosquitoes, which is ideal. But as the sun goes down and the, the wind dies down, there's definitely going to be a lot more mosquitoes. So this will be a good spot. It's kind of like a tip to so the lake down this way, and then there's a tip, and we're on the tip. And ordinarily, I wouldn't want to be here because of the wind, but in this case, the wind is a blessing. So after we do a little bit of cleanup, this will be our home for the next couple of days. And hopefully we get some fish. If not, we're just going to hang out. We can make all sorts of crafts with these rocks. <laughs> it's a big fire pit. pit. <laughs> and two earth, seats. Earth oven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get some work done here. So a lot of people might not know, but in Canada, you can actually camp on what's called crown land. And we're on it right now. Crown land means it's owned by the Crown, which is the government. And if you're a Canadian citizen, you can camp on Crown land for 21 days a year. But the truth is, nobody checks to see how many times you've camped on Crown land. So you can pretty much camp as much as you want, which is great. And there's a lot of Crown land in Canada. Piles of it, miles of it, miles and miles. More than you can ever explore in your whole life. There's a lot of people that might object to cutting anything in the wilderness, but truth is, it's because you haven't spent a lot of time in the wilderness. It's easy to just go by the mentality that everybody else has given you that you're supposed to, uh, you know, leave no trace. Jared, do we leave no trace? Well, I don't leave garbage. Yeah, garbage. Yeah. There's a difference between leave no trace and being dis disrespectful and then actually just having a almost zero impact on the environment yeah. so I mean we'll, we're gonna cut stuff we're gonna cut live trees to make a campsite here and that's not gonna be a big problem because it's gonna recover not very long so I mean use your judgment when you talk about no trace it has to be no trace it just has to be like you know in two years if you come back to a spot will people know there was somebody there and will they be offended by that or you know Will it be a big mess that people will not want to return to? It's really what we're talking about. And what we're gonna be doing here is actually improving the spot for livability's sake and functionality for people. And nature's not gonna know much of a difference when we're gone. And that's really the that's really what matters as far as no trace goes. To me anyway. You guys can do whatever you want. If you want to do zero trace, no trace, go for it. But to me, I'm gonna cut a trail, because I know I'm gonna be using that all all the whole time I'm here. So I cut some branches down and uh, we're going to be moving some rocks around so we have a nice spot to sit and we're going to be making a fire in here so we can cook in. And uh, we're going to be living in probably 30, 30 square yards at the most and when we're gone somebody's going to come back here and be like yeah that's a good place to camp and that's really what we're after. We're not going to leave waste and garbage and all that stuff here. Good.
All right, so we found our spring. We've come up just from the lake a little bit. It's a nice shaded spot here. This is the perfect place to set up a little cooler, a water cooler. So I'm gonna dig down a little bit because it's pretty shallow. And then we can put our worms in here. We can put, we've got a little bit of meat, some hot dogs and some hamburgers. You know, because this is like not low weight camping, ultralight. We brought in some nice fresh meat and all that stuff. But we, since we have a, a cooler here, we might as well take advantage of it. We know this is, doesn't rudge uh, fringe temperature. It's not quite that cold. It's probably about, you know, four or five degrees warmer than that. But it's much cooler than the air. And having it in the shade here will uh, keep our stuff from spoiling a lot sooner. But, I mean, it's not going to spoil anyway. We could bury it. There's some options too. Uh, use some moss, dig a little hole, uh, bury it, put some wet moss on top. That'll cool it also if we didn't have the, if we didn't have our nature's cooler right here. So I'm going to dig this out and we're going to, we're going to put our food in there and I'm going to put our worms in there and they're going to keep for a lot longer than they would ordinarily, especially exposed to the air. You do not want to leave things exposed to the air. If you can get it underneath, uh, in the, in the ground, touching the, touching the earth with wet on top, you're going to be so much better off. So let's clear the spot out. We got to do a little bit of work here. That water's so cold. Ah, so these brook trout love these lakes because they're spring fed and brook trout can't live anywhere where the water exceeds a certain temperature. The cooler the better. Whew, you can't keep your hand in there for longer than a few seconds. Whoa, <laughs> that is cold. Jeremy's just grabbing gravel out of that <clears throat> spring, filling up the bottom so a nice base. I think he's a little concerned we might burn down to the roots. We just uh, got back from fishing and not much luck. But, uh, this is a lake. You might wonder why I would bother to come out to this lake. It's kind of a bit of a crap shoot. Uh, lots of bait fish swimming around, but that's about it. It's a lake I've actually fished 20 years ago. I think we mentioned that. It's got a bit of a story to it. And I'll, hopefully I'll be able to tell you over the next day or two. But uh, if we can catch a brookie, all the better. There's lots of bait fish. We caught, that's what we caught, bait fish. Little minnows swimming around, that's what we caught. So Jer's up there cutting some wood. We're gonna get ready, we're gonna have dinner. It's gonna be an early dinner, three, four o'clock now. But we wanna get ready, eat, get that out of the way while we got daylight. And then we're gonna go back out and fish. We paddled around three times, the whole lake. It's not a big lake. We uh, didn't get any bites and uh, caught a bunch of minnows. There's tons of bait fish in here, tons and tons and tons. We did find more sign of probably some ice fishers, which is pretty much a death knell to any brook trout fishing. So it's likely that the people that live or that, that use the cabins back here are out here doing some ice fishing, which is a shame. Uh, there's a story to this lake and I, I want to tell you to you over the next while while I'm here and explain to you why I bothered to come back out here as a long shot. There's lots of places we could have gone besides this lake. But like I, I've been saying, I, it's been 20 years since I fished it. And I wanted to come back and see if it still had the potential that it had back then. So I want to show you some, some fish that I got, you know, when I was a teenager, essentially. We're going to go throw some hamburgers. Yeah, man, we're real camping this time. I'm going to throw some hamburgers on the fire here. Make some burgers without any condiments. Do it like how I used to do. When I was a teenager, so that's just a bit of a theme going on here. Uh, but the weather's nice. The mosquitoes are not so bad in the lake. A little bit bad here, but uh, be anxious to get a fire going. That will help kill kill the bush, the, the bugs that are in the bush here. But yeah, it's a nice day. It's a beautiful little lake. And uh, oh, 
You guys hear that? That's a bullfrog. We're gonna catch that bullfrog. We are going to catch that bullfrog and eat it. It's just over here. We heard one on the other side too. So chances are once that sun comes down, those bullfrogs are gonna start to sing and we're gonna go grab them because that's illegal. We'll keep an eye out, keep an ear out. Let's go run up to the refrigerator. And we'll grab our dinner. Chilled burgers. Growing your hair out long again? I don't know. I was. <laughs> I Look, might, but it's been bothering me a bit, so I don't know if I'm gonna. Looks like you're in the in-between stage. I am definitely on the in-between stage. Yeah. <laughs> We can cook these hamburgers on the rock. It's advanced for the old style me. So we'll break a couple rules and we'll cook how we cook now versus how we cook then. We didn't bring the fire grill, so yeah. Every time we walk past here, we see a bird fly up. So there's a good chance to be time to investigate, but there's actually a nest in there. That looks all right. Smells all right too. You ready for yours? Yep. Damn. Thanks. Thanks. Rock burger. You guys want to see me take a bite of this or no? Probably do. All right, let's set you down. It's a pretty good rock burger. Oh, we just had a pile of downtime, which was nice. Take a break. Oh, we're gonna go see if fish actually bite here in this lake. The evening bite, so it's about 7, 
7 p.m. And it's about fish hour. The wind's starting to die down. So we should be able to get in some good spots where the fish are hanging out. Fish hour. They like those low light hours of mornings and evenings. They're crepuscular. Look that up. I'm going to switch over from fish mode to bullfrog mode. There's a bunch of them going by camp. So we can't catch a fish. Hear that? Oh man, there's so many bullfrogs here now. Dude, we're going to catch a bunch of bullfrogs. We get oh, over there too. That one sounds like a huge one. There is no fish rising at all, which is unusual for a brook trout lake, at least one that's performing or producing well. So this one I think is done. And this lake is done. So I'm gonna tell you the backstory on this because tomorrow we're not gonna be fishing this lake by the looks of things. So on the other side of the lake, I caught a couple brookie and it was actually on the cover of a tourism magazine for North Bay. So you're looking at that right now. If I could find that magazine, I'll show you. And the last time I think I fished with my dad was at this lake. And I, I brought him out when I was about 17, 16, 17. And I carried the canoe all the way in, did all the bushwhacking, all that stuff, because my dad wasn't too into it. He actually laid up on shore with a migraine headache, but it ended up catching a nice three pound brook trout out of this lake. We have other stories here too, earlier on in the history of this lake, at least for us, there never used to be a trail coming in, but they since logged back here and then they made another access point, which actually just basically totally demolished this lake. It used to be that we'd have to come back three kilometers on snowshoe through another lake and then through a meadow system to get here, but that's no longer the case. Now you can uh, take an ATV trail in. And last time I checked last year, I got another minnow on. The minnow thing is really weird. <laughs> so these minnows are biting when they shouldn't be biting out in the middle of the water. So anyway, that's how we know there's not any fish here because the, the minnows shouldn't be hammering the, our lines like they are out in the middle like that. If they were doing that, the brook trout would just come up and smoke them. They tell us no surface action, none at all. And right around dusk, they should be hitting at least the surface, even if they're not biting on lines, they should at least be active on the surface and that's not happening. So well, anyway, a little bit of history on this lake. So the plan is now we're going to go maybe for bass. There's a bass lake nearby. It'd be nice to at least catch a fish on this trip. And then we can probably check out some brookie. And there's a couple stock lakes nearby, but this was a natural lake. It was a gem of a lake too. Three pound fish every time I came out.
Oh, Jer. Go get that guy. You guys hear that frog? <laughs> it sounds like a monster. It's a big bullfrog. We got no fish, nothing. No fish, no bites, all day. So that's it. So that's it for revisiting this lake. Like I said, 20 years ago I finished this lake and I was successful. I just never got around to fishing it again. So, there you go, I fished it again. I don't need to fish it again anymore. Never come back here. Now we're gonna have some frog legs maybe. <laughs> what are you doing over there? I was taking a poop. <laughs> he was taking a poop. <laughs> How far did you go? Uh, over here. <laughs> Pretty far, man. <laughs> it's gonna be a big one. <laughs> uh, I'll see if we can get that one on the dark. We'll cook it on the fire here. That'll make a night. Did I hit him or miss him? He missed. Did I? Yeah. Shit. I hit part of him. I think it's because you were watching the camera. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I just fucking grab him with my hand. I don't know if I get the leverage here, Jay, to be honest. With what? Here, can, I'll give I'll give this a go here. Can you back up a little bit? Cause I'm gonna hit the side of the a bit, a bit more. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better do it, man. Let's let's shoot. <laughs> let's I can't do film and do it at the same time. <laughs> Oh, here we go again. I I totally missed that. <laughs> Can't do this with the camera. No, I guess I could be filming, eh? That that's another huge one over there. Oh, wait, he's right there. He's right there. It's the same one. Here, you want to film? Here, if if I if I have if I have proper here, I can do it. Oh, jeez. Here, it's all filming and everything. Just flip the viewfinder around. Okay. Let me know when you've got there. That was good. <laughs> you trust me? Just a second, let me zoom a bit. Alright. Uh -huh. Ready? Yep. Dead nuts. Dead nuts. Came in stealth mode with the camo in the night shot. <laughs> I can't do two things at the same time, apparently. No. There we go. Is that showing up? Yep. <laughs> you got you caught him. I thought you were, that wasn't hard enough. I thought it was too soft. I thought right? it was too soft. It's just like a gravity kill. <laughs> <laughs>
I thought for sure that was not hard enough. I think you just got it right in the right spot. Yeah, this is finesse. Yeah. Show me. <laughs> oh, he's still alive. <laughs> Maybe he's not. Maybe he just landed on his belly. It's very slippery, eh? <laughs> You're holding it like a girl. I mean, like a man boy. <laughs> Sweet. The fat, eh? That other one's back. Yeah. That's not the mother, though. I mean, the father. Oh, the big daddy. Big daddy. Gravity drop? No. <laughs> He's the big one? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get him? There he is. Grab him. Grab him. Grab him. <laughs> get him. Where is he? You're right there under the leaves. You're right, no, right to next to the leaves there. <laughs> He's dead. He's already dead. I don't think he was that time. <laughs> no. <laughs> now you just want to be sure. Oh, I have to be sure. That, that's not even the big one. I don't think that's the big one. Maybe he just looked big the first time because no, he was the first one. No, there's a bigger one out there. Yeah. We're not resting until we get him. <laughs> yeah, because he's going to keep you up all night. <laughs> he might. I think most people would probably skin them, but we're not going to skin them. We're just going to cut the legs off, keep the skin on, and we're going to throw them on the fire. Yeah. Crude-like. Yeah. Because only, only a little bit of meat on the legs. Yeah. We'll, uh peel off later anyway, right? Yeah. So we just cut the leg right off, that's it. Little chicken legs. It's like chicken. Mm-hmm. That looks like it's perfectly done. <laughs> As we are serenaded by our dinner guest this evening. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. It tastes a little bit fishy too, eh? I like fishy chicken. Do you find? Yeah. It's good though. Yeah. These are just cooked just perfectly actually. Mm -hmm. With the legs on or the skin on. Mm -hmm. I think it holds the moisture in. Yep, that's the way to do it. Don't take the skin off, guys. Can't catch any fish, but pretty good in the frogs. All right, I think that's it for today. See you guys tomorrow. Go get some bass. <laughs>